Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Why don't we stand to our feet this morning? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Today is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Today is the day. Not yesterday, not tomorrow. Today is the day. Amen. And this is the time. Amen. And I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. I just, I just feel to, uh, to read this verse of scripture this morning to you uh, before we get into praise and worship. And, and uh, I'm excited to see what God does in this place. I don't know about you, but I've come expecting something to happen. Amen. I've come expecting something to happen in my life. Amen. Can you raise your hand and say, I'm expecting God to do something in my life this morning. Amen. It comes from Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 29. It says, he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Do you know that there's some promises in the Bible, amen, and you need to get, grab a hold of those promises sometimes and say, God, I might be weak, I might be faint, but God, there's a promise that if I wait on you, you're going to renew my strength. They shall man up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint, amen. I'm here this morning to tell somebody, amen, that the strength of the Lord is in this place. Amen. You might be weak, you might be weary. Come on, is anybody out there this morning? Amen. You might be battered, you might be bruised, but amen, there is a God that is here that can raise you up. There's a God that is here that can give you strength. Amen. There is a God that is here that sees you and knows exactly where you're at. Amen. And I want to encourage you this morning to lift up your hands. Come on, all across this building. Come on, lift up your hands and just say, Jesus, I'm here. Jesus, I'm here. I'm waiting on you. Jesus, I need your strength this morning. Jesus, I need your hand on my life this morning. Oh, come on. Can you give God some praise? Come on. Can you open up your mouth this morning? Oh, hallelujah. God, I'm standing on your promises. I'm standing on your word this morning. Amen. I'm looking up, 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 I'm looking up.
searching Who could carry that kind of weight It was my turn Till I met you I was breathing but not alive All my failures I tried to hide It was my tomb Jesus, till I met you Call my name When you, you called my name My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan, but you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the end. no one like our God why don't we raise up our hands up to him and just thank him just for that Lord there is no one like you Jesus there is no one like you Father you are our healer this morning you are our refuge this morning and we just thank you for that this morning Jesus hallelujah
of the Lord in this place. If you need something from God this morning, 
If you need something from God this morning, I want to encourage you to call on His name this morning. Come on, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place. Come on, the Holy Ghost is here. Oh, come on, call out to Him this morning. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, as they sing that song one more time. As they sing that song, I want to encourage you to step out. up your hands one more time this morning I want you just to say his name very softly just say Jesus whether you need healing in your body whether you need strength in your spirit all you have to do is call on his name all you have to do is just say Jesus Jesus here I am Lord Jesus, there's power in your name. There's power to overcome. Oh, Jesus, there is power. There is strength in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Why don't we clap our hands to the Lord? Hallelujah. I feel just the sweet presence of the Lord here this morning. Amen. 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 Man, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna move through the announcements somewhat quickly this morning. I wanna I just feel to to get Pastor up here as soon as we can. You may be seated this morning. I know typically we shake hands and and all of that good stuff, and and uh, we could certainly do that afterwards. I just wanna just kind of move through move through to this morning. I believe God wants to do something very special here. I just feel something. I feel something in the Holy Ghost brewing and stirring, amen. And uh, But we want to welcome each and every one of you that is here, amen. All of our, our church family, all of our guests that are here this morning, Lord bless you. Thank you so much for being here this morning, amen, church. Amen. Amen. And those that are, those that are online, we want to welcome you. Thank you so much for being here uh, or being with us this morning online, and we look forward to hopefully seeing you in service one day. Amen. There is something about when when the church comes together. Amen. We uh, that's uh, we do not want to forsake the assembly. Amen. But hey, we're thankful for online and we're thankful for for you that are that are uh, watching with us. Amen. I look forward to seeing you in person. Amen. I want to just make a few uh, quick announcements uh, this morning. Uh, tomorrow at uh, um, Tomorrow at 6 p.m. is our uh, monthly all-church prayer. The first Monday of each month has been our, 
our all church prayer uh, 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 night. So don't miss out on that. Amen. Six o'clock here in the sanctuary. Uh, Tuesday, of course, is worship in the word starting at six o'clock with prayer, seven o'clock service. And then Friday night, Friday night at six o'clock, there is going to be a ladies paint night with Sister Turner. Amen. So uh, it is uh, going to be a great time. The cost is only $10, but you must sign up in the foyer there in the, at the Welcome Center. You've got to sign up because they need to know uh, how much supplies to get and all that good stuff. So don't miss out on that. It's going to be a great time for our ladies. And then also on Friday night at 7 o'clock, our youth, our Level Up youth. Is there any youth in the house? Amen. Amen. So don't miss out on that. That is going to be at 7 o'clock. The ladies are going to be in the chapel and the youth are going to be here in the sanctuary, so don't miss out on that. And then we have two very big announcements. Everybody say big. So everybody, you can't, there's no excuses now. You all said it. You know what's come. You, you, you know that there's a big announcement coming. There's two of them, all right? So on October the 29th, we are going to be having our Harvest Festival, amen, here at Family Worship Center. With, uh, we're going to have uh, carnival booths jumpers and food and all kinds of fun stuff amen for the kids and family so don't miss out on that we are going to be asking for some signups uh for uh for, for uh, those that are able to volunteer uh uh on tuesday so we're going to need a lot of help this is a big outreach for our community amen big outreach for our community amen and so then uh, what we're doing is on saturday is the harvest part harvest festival and then on October the 30th, the day after, the, the, on that Sunday, we're going to be having a Friends Day. So the objective is, is to get people here, let them introduce them to our church on Saturday, invite them to church on Sunday. Amen. Fill them with the, you know, God's going to fill them with the Holy Ghost, baptize them. Amen. That's what it's all about. Amen. All right, we're going to have to work on that. That's what it's all about. Amen. This is not, I've got news for you. This is not a club. <laughs> we are not a club. Amen. We are in the business of winning souls. Amen. Making disciples. That's what God called us to do. Amen. And so this is a part of it. We want to be a, a blessing to our community and reach out to them. So be aware of that. And then, um, and then another big announcement. You've probably seen it on, on uh, social media and whatnot. December the 2nd, Joyful Noise is coming back. Amen. And this time... This time it is going to be a live recording. So we're going to be doing a live recording here, uh, here at the church, our FWC praise team, and some very special guests. So there's two things that you need to do. Need to do. I had two big announcements. Now there's two things that you need to do. Amen. Say I've got two things to do. Amen. All right. So you've got we've got tickets online. If you want to be a part of that live recording and in the and in the building, you got to go and get your tickets. Amen. You could do that through uh, wearefwc.org, our website. And then the other thing that we really need you to do is we really need to need your help promoting. Amen. How can I do that? Well, we're going to have some flyers and th some things that you could pass out to your family and friends. But also, I know everybody is on social media. I know you've got your Facebook and your and your Instagram and everything. What you can do to help out in promoting is to share, like, comment. Do all that, do all that stuff that I know you all like to do on other things. <laughs> so don't don't miss out on this. This is going to be a great opportunity for us to to do something very special here at Family Worship Center, and uh, it, it's it's going to be something that's going to last. Amen. For you know, in 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 the recording and, and everything, we're looking forward to seeing what what uh, things come about that. So amen. Keep it on your radar. Don't miss out on it. December the second, joyful noise returns. Amen. All right, why don't we stand to our feet this morning? Amen. We're going to uh, give unto the Lord, amen, our tithes and our offering. How many can say that he is faithful? He is faithful in everything. Amen. He just seems to make ways when we don't understand it. We look at our situations, we're like, how, is it, how, is, how are ends going to be made? How are things going to work out? But God just seems to work things out for those that put him first. Amen. Amen. And that is something very important. And one of, those, uh, one of those items is in our tithes and offering, giving him of our first fruits. Amen. And so we're going to do that this morning in our tithes and our offering. Let's go to the Lord. Let's ask him.
to bless this tithe and offering this morning. Lord, we thank you today, Jesus. We thank you for your spirit that is in this place, Lord, and, and what you've done thus far and what you're going to do, Lord. But at this time, we want to come to you and continue worshiping you in our giving. God, we give you of our tithes and we give you of our offering, Lord. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's march and let's worship as we give it to the Lord. Amen.
feeling and I felt it for a few days for this service amen somebody's here today and God knows you're here and he's here to help you amen amen let me just mention something also before I get into the word on that joyful noise weekend uh, brother Court Chavis he's a one of our great Pentecostal preachers from Georgia uh, will be with us coming out of to sing with our choir. And then he will be with us in service Sunday morning. And so you want to mark your calendars. It will tell, bring somebody with you because uh, he's a great, great preacher. God uses him in a mighty way. Amen. If we could all stand for the reading of the word of the Lord, Job chapter 14 verses 7 through 9 for there is hope of a tree if it be cut down that it will sprout again and that the tender branch thereof will not cease though the root thereof wax old in the earth and the stock thereof die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant. Amen. Amen. I think I've preached this here. It's probably been eight, ten years ago. And uh, as I was trying to prepare for this service, God just kept bringing me back to this and I couldn't get beyond this, so I really believe this is for somebody here this morning, amen, lay your Bibles down, uh, before you see it, let's give the Lord a great big hand clap, thank you Jesus, 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 amen, you may be seated. kind of emotional to, about the subject today for several reasons. <clears throat> One of them being that I have felt ever since a few days ago that I should preach on this subject today. And when I feel that way, it, it's, it's, it's like an anointing comes until it's over. And I feel that God wants to do something marvelous today as we talk about the scent of water. God wants to restore somebody today. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> I uh, wasn't much interested in school, except for football, baseball, and basketball, uh, to be honest with you. I did like history, and I did like science. And so one of the lessons I remember in school, and I can still see the book, my mind's eye with the picture of it was of roots 
and how strong a root can be. It showed how amazingly strong they are when reaching for their element. Roots, you've probably seen this too. Roots will burst through concrete. I mean, they've been walking down a sidewalk and you, you see it, it's off and it's because a root came through and they'll, they'll break it. Uh, it showed a picture of a, a sidewalk and how roots had bursted through it and broken the sidewalk and, and uh, pictures showed how roots would climb and it had a picture of a roof going uh, way over a wall to find water. Uh, then it mentioned something like this. It's really not that it's that strong. It had a, a diagram of a girl taking a root and snapping it in two. It's not that it's really that strong, but the real thing is that it is determined. It's determined. Its life source is water. And it's determined that it's not going to die. Amen. It's going to do whatever it has to do, amen, to go through objects that's in its way to get to the water. Hallelujah. And uh, I remember we had trees in that big city of Wee Patch where I grew up. Amen. And, and I remember uh, uh, we had a big cottonwood tree in, in the backyard and all these trees. And, and uh, <clears throat> you'd it occasionally, the neighbors would cut their trees down, and, and some of them have been cut down for a long time. You'd go out, and they'd, they'd leave like a stump there. I don't know. The stump was really hard to get out, so somehow they'd leave a stump there. And, uh, and even to the point where the, the stump starts decaying on top. How many have ever seen that? An old stump. Um, but from the, uh, from the side or sometimes from the top of the stump, there would be that new shoot or branch that would come out of all that rottenness. How many's ever seen that? Here's an old rotten stump, but here's a little bit of green stuff coming out of it. And because somewhere down in that decayed root, below the surface, there was a root that found its element water. I want to take you back to the church when it was born. The church was depicted in scripture as a tree. The tree that was the church had all kinds of beautiful leaves and all kinds of fruit. The tree sprouted on the day of Pentecost in the second chapter of Acts. And when the 120 people went up to the upper room and began to pray and seek the Lord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind filled all the place where they were sitting and cloven tongues like as a fire set upon each of them and they began to speak with other tongues. That's quite a picture right there, isn't it? And, and they said, men and brethren, what should, should we do? And, and uh, uh, what have you done? And, and give us some direction and what should we do now? And then in Acts 2.38, Peter uh, told them, repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall, everybody say shall, yeah. receive and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and from that little tree, the tree began to develop all kinds of fruits, all kinds of gifts of the Spirit. Everything was wonderful, amen. The church was growing. Thousands were receiving the Holy Ghost daily until... Politicians got involved. That's the story of our life. Politicians. I, I'm sorry, I just kind of aggravated at all of them. I mean, I don't, I don't even want to get, I'll be, I'll be in a rabbit hole over here if I get going on that. And it finally came to a place where Constantine said, in order for you to vote, you must be a member of the church. This is his church history. People faith coming to church so they could vote. They would come to church, go to a service so they could vote. And Constantine was soon running the whole show. He, he wasn't a preacher. He wasn't called. He wasn't anything but a politician. And the reason he eased up on the Christians was to get their votes. 
and not because he cared about them. Amen. He supposedly saw a vision of a cross in the sky, which meant by this sign you shall conquer. And in, in, in by 325 A.D., amen, they decided by a vote that people would no longer be baptized in the name of Jesus, but they would repeat the titles, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. That's where that started. It, did, it wasn't that way in the beginning. And the farther it went, the more of it was stripped away. And, and a, a, a canker worm and the palmer worm and every other worm came and tried to devour the tree of the church until it became nothing more than a dead, dry, formalistic stump. It was cut down with no way to recognize it as the tree that it once was. And this put the world and the dark ages in uh, a church into what is known as the dark ages. And the true church went underground into the catacombs of Rome. I have seen pictures of those catacombs of the heads. And I've talked to friends of mine that have been there. You can go down there and you'll see the heads of men that gave their life for this church where they beheaded them. Every kind of evil punishment imaginable to man was administered against the church of the living God. The false church rose up and when looking at the church from the ground, all you could see was a dead, dry stump. There were no leaves. There was no fruit. Amen. There was nothing pretty about it. It just looked like it was decaying. But, everybody say but. One day at a Bible college in Topeka, Kansas in the late 1800s, they got to talking about the possibility of receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Amen. Like it was given in the book of Acts. After daily examinations of the Bible and many discussions, they came to the conclusion that the Holy Ghost, evidenced by speaking with other tongues, was biblical. How many here today know that's biblical? How many today have received the Holy Ghost? If you receive, raise your hand at least. Hallelujah. Let us know. Praise God. I thought I was the only one here for a minute. Amen. Hallelujah. And so... So a few of the students began to pray about it, and finally it actually got to the place where they couldn't have class. The question was on everybody's minds was, would it be possible that I could be like that? That I could receive the Holy Ghost? They would start off class and say, now we're going to teach on such and such. And somebody would raise a hand and ask a question. What about this thing, the Holy Ghost? I can't sleep at night. I'm thinking about it all the time. It seems like there's just something happening I never felt before. History tells us that one minute after midnight on New Year's Eve, there was a little lady who, who got too close to the Holy Ghost. Amen. And a tender shoot jumped up out of that old dead dry stump. And she started speaking in other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Though the roots waxed old in the earth and the stump thereof died in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bring forth bowls like a plant. Amen. Amen. If you can just get the scent of water, if you can just get the scent, if you're dry here today and you feel like an old dried up stump, and it seems like everything in the world is coming against you. And you can't get past it all. Amen. If you can just smell the water. If you can get a scent of the Holy Ghost. Amen. That water that flows out of our bellies. Amen. I promise you it will change your life. After all those years, the root was reaching for its element. It broke through because underground was life. The church began to reseat itself, you might say. And it began to be poured out from Maine to California. California to Louisiana. From Texas to Mexico. You couldn't stop it. It was like a wildfire. 
a little boy visited a Pentecostal church. And when he got home, he went to his parents' room and said, Wake up, wake up. I got the Holy Ghost. We had some of that here. They said, There's no such thing. And he said, Then what am I going to do with it? You can't stop it. Though the roots was old in the earth and the stalk die in the ground, yet through the scent of water. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the great day of the feast, Jesus walked into the synagogue, sat down and began to read as was the custom. And while he was reading, it came time for an, for an era to change. Folks, when it gets time for things to change, an era to change, nobody can stop it. Oh, hallelujah. When God starts doing something, nothing can stop it. We can stop it. If we sit on our hands, we can stop it. Hallelujah. He stood up and he cried out, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scriptures hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the Spirit, which they that believed on him should receive. It's just like the old song says, Can't no grave hold my body down. Everybody remember that one? Man, we used to run and shout, ain't no grave going to hold my body down. We might all sing that again. There's nothing that can hold anything down when God gets ready to tear it all loose. <laughs> God can open doors that have been closed for 5,000 years. Amen. No matter how rusty the hinge is, God can pour the oil of the Holy Ghost on it. And all of a sudden, it's open and it's working and it's moving again. It has life again. Now today, it, it kind of like everybody knows about tongues. Brother N. A. Ershin, I've read stories about him. He came, he, he went to, he was at a barber shop in Louisiana one time. And this was the grandfather, this was N. A. Ershin the first, I guess, and then there was another N. A. Ershin that became a superintendent and all that. But this is the one that came through Russia and all that. He came here. He's sitting in the barber shop and he said, Are there any Pentecostals around here? And the barber answered him, Oh, yes. Pentecostals and Johnson grass are taking over this country. Of course, now everybody knows about it. They, they may have a distorted view of some of it, but they know about it. Let me tell you about the first denominal person who received the Holy Ghost in our part of the world, and as far as I know, in any part of the world. One day in a denominal church in Montgomery, Louisiana, everyone was up around the altar for a special consecration. A little lady had her eyes closed praying. The more she prayed, the better she felt, and the better she felt, the more she prayed. Hey, until all at once she got a little too close again, amen. And suddenly she started crying, and then she started speaking in a language that nobody had ever heard and nobody uh, really wanted to hear and afraid of it. She started uh, doing a little Holy Ghost jig, and, and after all those years, it broke through the denominational concrete. It climbed over denominational walls. It reached for its element and found the scent of water. Amen. That the pastor had to go somewhere the next day um, uh, to a hospital, and he told his wife, remember, there's the ladies' prayer meeting today. I want you to watch that woman and, and, and take, you know, correct her if you have to before I get back. And she said, okay, I'll do my best. And when he got back that afternoon about 5 p.m., his wife met him at the car, red-eyed, and he said, what's wrong? She said, oh, nothing's wrong, everything is right. His, his wife answered, and she, she, she squared me away, she said, and, and later the pastor also received the Holy Ghost. It's like Peter said at Cornelius' house, what can I say when these that have received the Holy Ghost as well as we, amen. Though the roots wax old in the earth, 
and the stalk die in the ground. Yet through the scent of water, it will bud and bring forth bows like a plant. Oh, what am I trying to tell you today? Amen. It's never too late. You're never too dead. Amen. You may feel like you haven't felt God in months and months and months, but I'm here to tell you right now. Amen. Can you smell the water? If you can just get a scent of the water. Hey, you may have been pushed down. Amen. You may have been talked about. Amen. You may have felt like an outsider in your own little group. Amen. But I'm here to tell you today, I smell some water. <laughs> oh, I got a scent of water. I've read stories about this. One night in one of their churches, the power of God started moving. And a man was sitting close to the front. And when the altar call was made, he got up and he went into the aisle to go toward the door. And all of a sudden, he stopped and came back toward the altar. And then he checked himself and began to go back toward the door. <laughs> then all of a sudden, he turned and ran just as hard as he could toward the altar. 45 minutes later, he had prayed, spoken tongues, and received a marvelous gift of the Holy Ghost. Then the pastor stood and said, I want this brother to come and tell us what he has received tonight. The man stood and said, I don't know what I have received, <laughs> to tell you the truth. I didn't intend to come to church. I never go to church. But I was walking by the building tonight, and all of a sudden... <laughs> All of a sudden, there was a feeling that came over me. And I felt like if I could just go inside, I could just look inside. If I could just stand there a minute, I would feel better. Oh, we've had several that's happened to here. So I came inside, and it felt so good to be there. I came on up and sat down, and the preacher began to preach today. Amen. And I didn't intend to come up here, but all of a sudden, a feeling came over me. If you can just get up to the front of the church, it would be just what you need. Amen. I tried to get away, but when I started, it, it felt so good. I never felt like this before in my life. And that's the drawing power of God. Amen. And when a man is reaching for his element, he may fight sometimes, but if there's something down inside of him, speaking to him, prodding him, pulling him, he will reach out for God until he finds him. He will find the scent of water. Oh, clap your hands. Any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Hallelujah. My God. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost today. I'm talking about revival. Amen. This month our focus is on revival. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. There's another story. Is this all right? Y'all bored and won't go home? Hallelujah. Can I tell one more story? All right. I read a story about somebody uh, picked up a hitchhiker back when hitchhiking was, you don't do that now, but used to, you could hitchhike all the way across the country, get out there, stick your thumb out. And uh, so he, he uh, had a, got a backslider and riding, hitchhiking, got him in his truck. And as they were driving along, they passed by a little Pentecostal church uh, setting up on a hill. And he looked over and the guy with him had his handkerchief out and was dabbing his eyes. The passenger said, you, you, uh, you'll have to excuse me, but I was raised in that church there. And here lately, every time I pass it, something happens to me. That's the scent of water. John Mark was a Pentecostal. He was working in the church, and all of a sudden, he quit working at the church, went back to Jerusalem. He went home to Mama and stayed 13 years. Then all at once, he sails back into the book of Acts, and he said, I want to go on the second missionary journey. I missed the first one, but 
I, can, I, I want to catch the second lap. Paul said, you can't go. Paul was still mad at him. Yeah. Amen. And Barnabas said, you can go. So now they're butting heads over that. They had a little argument about it. Finally, Barnabas said, okay, he can go with me. And Paul said, all right, I'll take Silas. You take John Mark. We'll split up and go different routes. John Mark didn't say anything. He just wanted to go. He just wanted to feel the touch of God again. He just wanted to preach one more time. Amen. He had walked away from God, and Paul rebuked him for it. Amen. But let me tell you something. There was still something drawing him. Amen. There was that scent of water that was in his life that something kept budding a little bit here and there. And he didn't care if it was going to cost him his life. He didn't care if he was going to get a beating in prison. He didn't care if he was going to get shipwrecked. He didn't care if he was going to have food in his mouth or not. All he wanted to do was one more time was feel the glory of God. The scent of water. If you're here today and you haven't felt the presence of God for a while. Man. I'm reaching out to you today. God's reaching out to you today. You know, we all know if we're where we ought to be with God. Amen. Everybody smile. It's time for you to give everything over to the feeling down inside your heart. That little sprout that wants to bud. <laughs> oh, maybe your life has been decaying. Maybe you don't come to church on a regular basis. I'm probably going to get in trouble for this, but I'm going to mention it again. Maybe you got Tuesday-itis. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to stop. <laughs> I'm going to get a list of those that don't come on Tuesday night. I'm going to call them and say, you got Tuesday-itis? <laughs> Need me to pray for you? I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Amen. Maybe it don't mean as much as it used to. Maybe you've gotten burnt out. Maybe somebody offended you. Maybe ministry or something treated you wrong. There's so many wounded people out in our world today. Oh, my God. God is looking for you, and he wants to wrap his arms around you. Amen. You think you're done, you're dried up, and you don't know how you're going to grow and be successful in the church again. But God is saying, let me tell you something. I'm going to water it, and it's going to grow. Amen. The decay is going to go away and drop off. Amen. And you're going to be whole again. Amen. I heard one more story. I lied before. I, I, I forgot about this one. But I heard a story about a family that had about 12 or 13 kids. Now they used to do that back in the old, back, back in the 30s and 40s and 50s. How many came from, how many came from a big family? Look at that. My family, there was five boys and three girls. And I had a brother younger than me that, that died of SIDS, sudden infant death. So that would have been, uh, how many, uh, eight, nine? And then a little girl that was miscarried, so that had been 10 right there. Hallelujah, man. Was, they just didn't get it or something. I, I don't even know how you feed that many kids. My God, can you imagine? And, uh, but this guy had a bunch of kids, and he named them all Bible names. He named them Gideon, Paul, Ruth, and so on and on. And, they didn't live for God, and one day Gideon left and never came back. He was gone for years, just gone. Nobody heard from him. In fact, they figured that something had happened. Maybe he was dead. One day, some of their relatives were in Beaumont, Texas, and they came to a red light, and there was a big 18-wheeler truck sitting beside them. They looked up casually at the driver, and it was Gideon. And they waved to him, and he pulled into a restaurant parking lot, and they went to the restaurant to talk. 
Gideon was chained, smoking, and all of a sudden my cousin said, Gideon, could I, could I ask you a question? And he said, uh, sure, go ahead, anything. Gideon, you know you haven't been to church since you were a little boy, and I want you to know, do you ever at any time think of church? Gideon ground his cigarette out, tears filled his eyes, and he said, man, you don't know how much and how often. He began to weep. When he gained his composure, he said, I want to ask you a question that I have been wanting to ask somebody. Whatever happened to that old brother Smith? <laughs> I remember him bringing us stuff to eat when we were hungry. Where is he? Is he alive? I also have wanted to ask, do people still holler amen in church? I've been wanting to hear that again. When preacher, pe preachers preach, do they still get excited? Though the roots wax old in the ground and the stalk thereof dies in the ground, yet through the scent of water it will bring forth bowls like a plant. Oh, that tender shoot will sprout again. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to talk to some of you about your kids. Don't give up on your kids. Amen. It seems like they're never going to change. It looks like there's no way they'll ever come back to God. But just keep pouring the water on the roots. Amen. Amen. A heart panteth after the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Amen. That little deer-like animal is running, and he's thirsty, and he doesn't have time to worry about the archers. He's too thirsty, and he doesn't have time to stop in the green cornfield. He is too thirsty, so he stretches out every muscle. Every muscle is taut because he's going for the water. You don't know what your children are having to climb through. Amen. You don't know what to do to help them right now. Just keep on watering them. Just pour the water. <laughs> Just pour the water. Keep pouring the water. Don't give up on them. Keep pouring the water. Amen. Their salvation may depend on you. Their salvation may depend on you. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Let's love the Lord for a moment. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, come on. Somebody cry out to the Lord right now. How many needs a little bit of water? You may not see the water, but you can smell it. Oh, God. Oh, I smell the sin in water. <laughs> Oh, I smell it in this service this morning. Come on. Come on. God wants to restore somebody today. Come on, let's stand. Let's all stand. How is your relationship with God? Come on, don't stop. Don't stop. The altar's open. Brother Estrada, come here. God's wanting to do something this morning. Just keep praying. Just keep praying. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. God's done another miracle in this man's life. Strengthen him, Lord. Like he's never been strengthened before. In Jesus' name. 
Come on, do you have a need here today? Do you have a need here today? God's a miracle working God today. Right now, this is your time. Don't, don't be shy. Amen, don't be afraid. Don't let fear hold you back. Oh, I smell the scent of water.
Come on, God is moving in this place. Come on, I want to encourage you maybe to find a brother or find another sister. Come on, will you lay your hands on them, begin to pray. Come on, let's agree this morning. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. I smell the water in this place. I smell the water in this house. Come on, that's it. That's it, family worship. Oh, come on, God is in this house right now. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Oh, come on, that's it, that's it, that's it. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. I feel the rain. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. I'm melting 